Welcome back to Intrepid Healthcare. I'm your host, Joe Lavelle, joined by my friend and colleague, Todd Schnick. Good morning, Todd. Really looking forward to our conversation today around EHR workflow. Yeah, Joe, it's uh, surprisingly not something we talk about often enough on the show, so I'm looking forward to getting into it. Let's get right into it. We're joined today by Dr. Chuck Webster, president of EHR Workflow, Inc. Chuck, welcome to the show. Uh, hello, Joe. Hello, Todd. And it's an honor to be on Intrepid Now. That's awesome. Well, we appreciate you making the time. Before we get into our discussion, um, can you take a few seconds and tell the audience about you and your background? Uh, sure. Well, I'm, I'm Chuck Webster. Uh, Wearflow on Twitter, W-A-R-E-F-L-O. Uh, which is a portmanteau, a combination of software and workflow. Uh, and uh, my main uh, blog is chuckwebster.com. Uh, I have degrees in accountancy, industrial engineering, artificial intelligence, and medicine. Uh, in fact, I'm the only pre-med accounting major I've ever met. Uh, I'm also ABD, that's all but dissertation in computational linguistics, uh, but uh, didn't finish that up. Uh, my mother says I'm killing myself by degrees. Uh, I designed what I believe was the first undergraduate program in medical informatics back in the 90s. Uh, I was a software architect in a hospital in my S department, and I was chief medical informatics officer for an EHR vendor. Uh, during that time, I helped customers win three Hims Davies Awards for EHR ambulatory excellence. Uh, most recently, I've evangelized the introduction of a variety of workflow technologies into healthcare. Uh, I've been nicknamed variously uh, Dr. Workflow. Uh, the king of all workflow in healthcare, and uh, sometimes the workflow bear. Todd, without a doubt, we are talking to the right person about EHR workflow. Uh, something tells me he's got uh, an, enough notches in his belt here to know what he's talking about. Absolutely. Chuck, would you take a, just a few seconds to provide our audience with a 10,000-foot view of EHR workflow, Inc.? Uh, yeah, well, that, I, it, that's an LLC. I'm, I'm the company. Uh, and basically, a few years ago, I had the idea of creating an online platform to educate and connect people about workflow. Uh, and basically, I became that platform through my blog and through Twitter and so forth. Uh, my role is threefold. Uh, educate. Uh, number two, highlight those health IT vendors who really get workflow, in my opinion. And number three, uh, network with and advise workflow tech companies outside of healthcare how to adapt their products to healthcare and communicate their value. Uh, in the above regard... I'm available to write uh, white papers, present webinars, interview healthcare workflow rocket scientists, publish those on my blogs, and uh, what I love most, to conduct extended Twitter conversations about workflow, uh, sometimes during health IT conferences on their respective hashtags. All right, good stuff. Well, as I said, Chuck, uh, workflow is not something we've talked about enough on the show, and so since you are a well-known expert and Dr. Workflow, Lead us off uh, to be sure our audience is real clear on what your definition of workflow is. Uh, well, I've uh, literally looked at hundreds of definitions, some of which would fill two PowerPoint slides with small font. Uh, but this is my favorite, and that is it's simply a series of steps consuming resources, achieving goals. And the reason I like that is everybody agrees, well, workflow series of steps, tasks, activities, but the consuming resources, that's a cost, and the achieving goals, well, that's the benefit. So it puts workflow into an economic cost-benefit context. Perfect, Chuck. I've also heard you talk about workflow engines. What's a workflow engine? Ah, well, let's see. A workflow engine, which uh, are, they are diffusing uh, into healthcare and to healthcare technology, is a, um, it, is a it, it parses or it interprets a model of workflow. So, for example, if you were to draw out a workflow in a workflow editor, in a workflow management system, or what's sometimes called today a business process management system, you would you draw your workflow. You've essentially drawn a computer program. And then the workflow engine interprets the, the nodes and the arrows and the labels to actually execute and become an application that, that presents forms to people, uh, that forwards things, that that executes business logic. So it's a way, uh, the workflow engine is the thing that allows someone who isn't a C-sharp or a Java or a MUMPS programmer to lay out uh, a process just like one might draw on a napkin, but then have that uh, executed. So it's in a, in a sort of a way for non-programmers to become, to design applications that actually work, although there's still some uh, technical knowledge required. 
All right. Well, thanks for clarifying what a workflow engine is, but help me understand how it works with an EHR. Uh, sure. Well, uh, at the point of care, workflow engines, workflow technology is probably the least represented. Uh, uh, you, you find them uh, in uh, at the insurance payment uh, industry. You find them uh, in radiology information systems. Uh, uh, the, the advanced natural language processing and speech recognition systems rely heavily on workflow technology. Uh, but uh, in an EHR, uh, the most uh, typical use of a workflow engine is to control what's called screen flow. So, for example, uh, doctors hate to ha all the clicking. They call it clickorrhea after diarrhea. Well, a lot of that clicking is really navigating from screen to screen and finding the button uh, or the hotspot that you want to click or touch. And a lot of that navigation can be taken over by a workflow engine. So uh, there's a couple of EHRs out there that have what are called work plans. And a work plan is basically a series of screens uh, that you can lay out without having to be a programmer. And they will advance automatically as you go through a, a series of tasks relevant to specific workflows, such as a well-child visit or uh, a kid that comes in to, to manage a chronic uh, problem such as asthma. Perfect. So, Chuck, we've got workflow engines, we've got EHRs. How many EHRs really have significantly configurable workflow uh, versus those that are, you get what you get? Uh, very few. Uh, in fact, uh, I would probably say the vast majority of EHRs have what I call a frozen workflow. Uh, and that is the workflow is hard-coded uh, uh, by the programmers back at the EHR vendor. And so the doctors complain that the workflow of the EHR doesn't match their workflow. Uh, where you uh, – and, and a lot of that is because uh, work, the functionality and the behavior uh, and, 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 and the workflow, in fact, of EHRs has been rather uh, dictated uh, by the whole meaningful use program. So outside of areas where meaningful use has not sort of pinned features and functionality, you're seeing workflow engines in, uh, in patient-facing, uh, uh, consumer-oriented uh, applications. Uh, you're seeing it in the back office. Uh, you're seeing it in the, uh, the uh, interoperability realm. Uh, but that's, that this kind of technology is exactly what we need to get to the point of care so the doctors can take back their workflow. In fact, sometimes I use the hashtag, uh, hashtag uh, Occupy Healthcare Workflow. <laughs> you know, I'm still processing, Chuck, your definition of workflow. I thought I understood what it was, but, but your definition really clarified it for me. Series of steps, consuming resources, achieving goals. And it strikes me that if if I needed that resolution, that maybe there's a wider swath of the of the marketplace that doesn't still clearly get this. I mean, what's your sense of this? The marketplace that you're interacting with, do they really understand workflow in, in its truest sense in a way that leverages their talents and abilities to serve their market? Uh, in, I, in my opinion, no, not yet. Uh, however... Uh, I every year before the HIMSS uh, conference, I look at every single website of every single exhibitor. It's over a thousand, and I search for workflow. Uh, and uh, so, in uh, three, two, three years ago, four percent of the websites talked about workflow in a meaningful way. Two years ago, eight percent. Last year in Orlando, sixteen uh, percent. So I'm I'm seeing a big uptick. But it's, it's happening sort of across the board and in some ways kind of under the radar. So it's one of those things like social, mobile, and lakes and cloud that's going to pop. It's going to burst into the popular consciousness, and it could be this year. All right. Intrepid Healthcare will be return with our guest, Chuck Webster, right after this break. We'll be right back. At Javion, we know that healthcare providers do remarkable things every day. And we understand the pressures and challenges providers face in today's healthcare system. That's why we are helping providers by predicting and preventing financial and clinical waste. Through a suite of big data software solutions that combine clinical intelligence with deep machine learning technologies, we can stop the waste of resources and lives by stopping losses before they ever happen. And by doing this, we help providers focus on what they do best, delivering care. Javion, we help providers stay remarkable. Visit javion.com.
We're back with Chuck Webster, president of EHR Workflow, Inc. Chuck, last year at HIMS, Big Data was a star of the show. Will Big Week Workflow be the star of HIMS 15? Uh, I would like it to be so, and if I have anything to do with it, it, ma- it might actually happen. Uh, but it's quite a paradigm shift. Uh, but let's talk a little bit about the difference between data and workflow. Data is, uh, is very useful. We need data to, uh, to understand what happened, but we need workflow to drive what happens next, to close that loop, to create actionable data. Uh, and in fact, uh, workflow technology is exactly what we need to take all that big data and turn that into pushing to items onto the right to-do list of the right person. And that right person might even be a patient. So it's a way of including the patient on the team. Uh, I'm expecting to see 20, 25% of the, of the vendors out there over, there'll probably be about 1,300 that will be talking about workflow in a substantive fashion. So in that sense, yes, I think that big workflow is, uh, is, 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 will be in the process of bursting onto the scene at, uh, scene at this year's conference. Chuck, I've always said that we are really good at collecting data but we really stink at doing anything meaningful with it. I, I, I guess what you're, another way to say that is, is someone who's not fully leveraging the data they're collecting probably doesn't have a good workflow. I mean, is it that simple? Uh, I, I, you know, yeah, it is. Of course, the devil's in the details. It gets awfully qu- uh, complicated very quickly. Uh, but uh, it's interesting. I just was reading an article yesterday about a, a multi-million dollar deal, uh, $18 million for a startup. Uh, and uh, and, and the, the story was uh, that the hospitals are saying, we have all this data, we have all this content, we have all the, these algorithms, but what we really need are workflow solutions that uh, that drive uh, the behavior uh, of, uh, of of the clinicians and the patients, and do it in such a way that uh, they don't feel like they're just made into cogs, but rather uh, they're be- all of what they really want to do and what they know is the right thing to do is being uh, facilitated and made easier. Chuck, we talked and we teased a little about Hims fifteen. Uh, specifically, what do you have planned for Hims fifteen in terms of workflow? Uh, well, I'm going to do what I do every year, uh, which is, uh, but I do more of it. Uh, uh, I do more of it in two senses. Uh, first of all, there are more uh, vendors that are jumping on the workflow bandwagon. And second of all, uh, I sort of have to up my game. Uh, so I think every one of the last two or three years I've been in the top ten. I think, Joe, uh, you were there uh, of the sort of uh, tweeters on the, on the hashtag. And what I do is I go through and I find all the really great workflow stories and nuggets in the exhibitor websites, and I tweet them, and I engage them in conversation. It's trying to get the thought leaders who sometimes don't uh, uh, deal with the vendors as much as I'd like, and the vendors, sometimes they just kind of repeat, oh, come to our booth and win an iPad. Well, let's start a substantive discussion of workflow between the thought leaders and the vendors. That's what I'm trying to ignite. Chuck, I've heard you say in the past uh, that workflow can be a bridge from features to benefits. Uh, I think you've done some writing on that. Uh, help me better understand what you mean by that. Uh, well, uh, I have actually uh, on the, uh, a, uh, uh, another website, uh, HL7 Standards, I've got a, a column coming up, and I think the title is uh, 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 Marketing Workflow is an Incredible Opportunity to Differentiate Health IT Products and You. Uh, and so uh, features uh, and uh, functions, well, you know, uh, there's a list of uh, things it does. It's, 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 uh, it's, it's got HIPAA compliant uh, login. Uh, you can look up some information about the patient. You can direct someone to do something. Well, guess what? There's the workflow, A, B, and C. Uh, and so, you, you, you know, so workflow ties together features and, 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 and functions, and then it achieves some goal. Well, the goal is the benefit. So workflow is just is the ideal way to think about the relationship between features, functions, and benefits. Hey, Chuck, this is our show, and we could do what we want. So um, I'm going to ask you this question. Um, give us a sense of who's doing it right out there. What vendors really get this, and should we go learn from? Uh, that's very interesting. Uh, and, and it's it's really uh, across the board. I mean, there is no one area. It's not like just radiology is doing it, although radiology is more advanced uh, than average. Uh, 
but you've got, okay, uh, it, with respect to Google Glass, Pristine I.O. is using uh, a version of workflow technology on the back end. Uh, Clinic Spectrum, uh, which does practice management uh, revenue uh, stuff, uh, has a very sophisticated uh, concern and knowledge of, of workflow. Uh, the two uh, big uh, speech uh, companies, Immodal and Nuance, have very sophisticated workflow technology on the back end. Um, most recently, I've been very impressed by what IBM has been doing with Ottawa Hospital in Canada. Uh, they've used uh, the IBM BPM suite uh, as the back end to create a mobile clinical application. And they've standardized processes, they've instrumented those processes so they have all these numbers and they've been able to predict much more accurately when the patient is going to be released and what they do is they publish that number for everybody and everybody can see it so everybody knows that they have to get their tests in before the patient leaves. That way the patient doesn't leave without tests being undone and the patient isn't delayed to leave which costs the hospital money. That's just a short list. I could probably come up with another uh, 20 uh, off the uh, top of my head. We might Chuck, ask you that uh, to put in the show notes, Chuck. That'd be great. Sure. Love to. Yeah, that would be useful. Chuck, uh, you mentioned meaningful use at the top half of the show. I'm just curious. Is, is, are things like this ICD-10 conversion and meaningful use and all, is that helping the cause of, is that almost forcing the hand of people to better understand it, uh, workflow? Uh, well, uh, you know, meaningful use takes its lumps and I probably have been uh, one of the, uh, the critics, uh, but I th whatever else it's done, it's created a, a multi-billion dollar industry of workarounds. Uh, whether you're talking about EMR light or uh, mobile EHRs that are talking to, uh, through some layer to the EHR, uh, or uh, speech recognition to, to, to uh, compensate for uh, the, 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 the uh, kludgy user interfaces. So, so indirectly, uh, I'd like to think that meaningful use is setting the stage for creating layers of task management and task visibility and workflow technology uh, that will take us to the next level in terms of uh, true effectiveness, efficiency, and user satisfaction, where I mean both the people who are clicking on things uh, as well as the, uh, uh, the patients at home. Chuck, one thing uh, we haven't talked about is the role of standards in workflow. How do things like HL7 and H IHE play with workflow? Uh, well, to date, uh, HL7 hasn't uh, addressed it as, uh, in terms of a workflow technology, uh, although there is a, uh, a cross- uh, organizational uh, uh, standard that's being worked on that uh, could be useful in that regard. Um, I think, though, that uh, the the new, uh, like for example, uh, fire, uh, fast healthcare and operability resources uh, stuff is really fits very nicely into workflow technology because APIs are not enough. Uh, you can you can mandate open APIs all you want, but unless you tie them together into usable workflows, uh, it's not going to be uh, particularly effective. And so uh, what you see in the API industry is often two layers. You see what's called the API data layer, and you also see what's called the API orchestration layer. And the orchestration layer is essentially a layer of workflow technology uh, that inter mediates in a nice way between the calls to the uh, API uh, and the uh, what happens at the user uh, uh, interface which it, it, you know directly affects user experience perfect Chuck I hate to say it we're about out of time before I let you go remind people how they can contact you and learn more about EHR workflow Oh, please. Uh, well, best way is Twitter, Wareflow, W-A-R-E-F-L-O. I'm very uh, interactive with folks. Uh, there's the contact form of my main blog, which is chuckwebster.com. Uh, and I also encourage people to visit a couple of other blogs I have uh, and resources. One is called uh, Healthcare BPM, Healthcare Business Process Management, although the initials are just hcbpm.com. Uh, and the other is something I call EHR.biz report, EHR.bz. And that's a list, Drudge Report style list of almost 2,000 links to resources about uh, healthcare workflow and workflow technology. Great. That was Dr. Chuck Webster, president of EHR Workflow Inc. Chuck, it is our pleasure to have you. Thanks so much for stopping by today. Thank you very, very much. I have so enjoyed speaking with both of you. Absolutely. That wraps our broadcast. On behalf of our guest, Dr. Chuck Webster, my co-host, Todd Schnick. I'm Joe Lavelle. We'll see you soon on Intrepid Healthcare. What you, what you
Come on. Come on.